10 solo, including four tackles for losses, totaling 17 yards and two sacks. He was a beast. That's just make just make it simple. And of course, Jenkins showed the way again why he's the best kick returner in FCS. Again, Jenkins showed, not Jenkins, Keith Jenkins Jr. showed why he is the best kicker kick returner in the FCS, picking his way through the Hornets and dashing down the right sideline to open the second half with a 90-yard kickoff return touchdown that gave the Bears their 23-7 lead and what ended up being a 37-7 win. You know, he kind of reminds me of myself when I played football. I used to dart <laughs> up the side like that. I, I don't see what's so funny. I used to dart up the side like that. He's 6-1, I'm 5-6 and some change. So, anyway, and last but not least, <laughs> Simpkins anchored the Eagles offensive line that paved the way for North Carolina Central to rack up 548 yards of total offense and a win uh, at Norfolk State, recording three pancake blocks. That's my favorite stat besides kills in volleyball. Pancake blocks. Simpkins graded out at 90%, helping uh, North Carolina Central's offense average 8.3 yards per play and a record 201 rushing yards. So those are your MEAC Players of the Week. Good job, Mike. Mike having fun today, isn't he? He had a blast over there. Huh? Heels and volleyball. <laughs> Squack Bass uh, Volleyball Tournament is coming up. We'll probably give you some breakdowns in terms of those seated on Thursday. We had that information, and we'll run down who plays who, uh, number one seed all the way to number eight. And those teams that will be playing for a championship will be interesting uh, as uh, we have co-champions in terms of regular season, uh, FAMU and Alabama State. I will share that information, but it'll be good to see what's going on next. Let's continue to get out there. Let me give an update for the Big South Player of the Week. They had two of them coming out of a and North Carolina a and had the defensive lineman, Shamari Wallace. It was the uh, defensive player of the week for the games played on the week 11 of the 202 uh, 2022 regular season, as they say, I should say. And kicker returner, Tavon Cook is the special times player of the week in terms of what he got it done. Wallace posted a career high eight tackles, two assists with 3.0 tackles for loss, and a sack in the North Carolina ANTs in 10 win over Charleston Southern that kept the Aggies atop the Big South standing, which means they'll play for a conference championship this week. He played a crucial part in the Aggies holding uh, Charleston. Southern to 48 rushing yards on 14 carries, as well as a lot of fewest offensive yards, 2010, and points 10 against a division opponent this season. The defense came to play. Cook returned a second quarter, took off 95 yards for a touchdown against Charleston Southern, which tied the game at 7 7 and jump started AT's eventual comeback victory to get it done. They've had several comeback victories a couple times this season. Don't know if they want to do that against the next. Opponent Gardner Webb that is also undefeated, but it does make things interesting this week. A lot of accolades going around. We got the playoff pitch in hands. Shout out to the CIAA uh, getting two teams in in terms of Fayetteville State. We talked about them getting the championship. We found out later that that evening uh, that they got the nod to get into the Division II playoffs. So a great, great for them. We had some questions. We're not sure they were going to be able to get in, uh, but it looks like they probably bumped out for. Valley State out of the SIC, but the fact mm. they won the CIAA makes a lot of really look at it. Kudos for them. Virginia Union that we thought were in, uh, obviously, until you hear it, you want to know what's going on there. They um, lost that game to Chowan that it ultimately played Fayetteville. They won on that last second with zero seconds on the clock championship. And then coming out of the SIC, Benedict. Not only did they get in the tournament, they were the number one seed, which means they get that opening round bot. So it'll be fascinating. We'll talk about those matchups in terms of those first round games. We'll talk about that on Thursday for the SIC CIAA game of the week. We'll give you a little framework more uh, on this second half of the show in regards to Benedict, how things shape out in terms of the region and what they will be looking at. at. Second round game could be a HBCU matchup between the two if we get uh, HBCUs out of those first rounds. So that's fascinating when you talk about that. So I did want to give a little bit of an update on the playoffs for the Division II programs. Good stuff. you got interviews with coaches. You can go back and check out Brian and AD on their Sunday night show, Sports Wrap. They got coaches in there and broke down a lot about the Division II playoffs. Great information there. Charles, 
Bishop, what else news that you got on your mind? Well, I wanted to mention that we have some uh, postseason honors. Uh, when you take a look at the SIAC, uh, running back Emmanuel Wilson of Fort Valley State, he headlines the 2022 SIAC football all-conference team, earning this, this year's overall Player of the Year MVP and Offensive Player of the Year awards. Uh, the team features 52 total student-athletes covering 12 positions as voted by the league's head coaches and sports information directors. Benedict's defensive lineman, Lubert Dennis was named the Defensive Player of the Year alongside Fort Valley State's quarterback Kevin Durham, who earned the Freshman of the Year and Newcomer of the Year awards. And then, of course, Shannon Berry of Benedict was selected 2022 SIAC Coach of the Year. Yes, good stuff, good stuff. Let me get this before we get into the break. Then Mike will come back on the other side. I want to get both of y'all thoughts on my top 10 rankings, mid-major and major. Things are kind of thinning out, so you don't have a lot of changes. But we're going to give those updates. Some things may have changed in terms of some of the top five, top ten spots. We'll see what you think about when all this goes down. I did want to say that we got a couple of more teams, a couple of more HBCUs in the top 25, according to the American Football Coaches Association. That's AFCA, FCS top 25 coaches poll that comes out on Monday. We've known that Jackson State has been up there. They still remain the top five. Uh, as they continue to get it done week after week. But we got two teams that got in there, one out of the MIAC and another one out of the SWAC. Anybody want to guess who they are? Charles, you want to take a guess on one? I got a pretty good guess. <laughs> what you got? I got you North got? Carolina Central. I got North Carolina Central. You got it. Yeah. I know you pay attention to your news out there and all that. Mike, you got a guess on the other? Would it be that team in Florida? That team in Florida. Yeah. Snakes down there to rally. That's right. Else strike. You strike. are correct. <laughs> strike, strike, and, and they were struck. Sam, you and North Carolina Central respectively jump in the top 25. Always good to see HBCU programs in there. And then you got even A&T hanging out the outside of that, receiving votes. Essentially would be number 32 if you broke it all the way down to that length. So interesting to final up as these teams type to gear up. We talked about North Carolina Central getting it done in fan fashion as they clinched the bid to the Celebration Bowl and at least a share of the championship. We have some big matchup on Thursday we'll talk about that goes on Saturday between the MEAC to see if Howard, yeah, that Howard that Mike likes to mess around and see if they can get a piece of the championship. Can you believe that in terms of what they're doing there? No, Let's I can't. With it. We'll be right back on the <laughs> other side. Yeah, exactly. After, the, after this break, stick with us. We'll be right back. Get into the Paul rank. Paul rank. Stick with me right back. Ooh. find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slowburn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge. It's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place, a space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slow Burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival, you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they want to tap, uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Nope, not going in, not gonna drown today. Fixing your credit score can be scary, but with Credit Versio, we take the fear out of it. <sighs> okay, you can do this, be brave. Don't cry again. Hey, <laughs> this isn't too bad. Credit Versio helps dispute negative marks on your credit using our state-of-the-art technology that guides you every step of the way. It's never been easier to fix your credit and increase your credit score. Seriously, you can do this. Visit creditversio.com right now to get started. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Nope. 
Nope. Come on, him. Ooh. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know him like I know him, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball? Who the ball? So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with the professors. That's Professor Bill, Professor Washington. Some people say Professor Big Washington. <laughs> Big Mike Washington. <laughs> with that being said, Charles, you got an update over there? I know you be sneaking in them games on the show. I don't know how you multi had like that, but you're pretty good. Uh, yeah. Prairie View and Washington State, they're getting it on out there at Prairie View, but Prairie View is on top of Washington State right now, 25 to 12. Yep. Yeah, yeah, let's keep it going. Let's make it three. Obviously, we got two of them in there in terms of Squack Pat 12 challenge, uh, a series as they like to call it. I don't know how much they're gonna feel comfortable about coming back around here. It might be a one year type deal. I think it's gonna be two, <laughs> exactly. but they're gonna cut it short. Uh, they keep doing it like this. Obviously, last week, uh, Friday at Grambling, getting it done at home, getting a big win, and then on Sunday, you had Texas Southern. Getting a win and sandwiched in between that, they're all going to get a win. It was outside of the Pac-12 SWAC challenge, but they went on the road uh, and got a big win. So kudos there. And then you talk about Prairie View as they host Washington State, get it done. So big time wins, uh, good stuff. Any thoughts on that, Charles? Yeah, I mean, I think it's huge for uh, SWAC basketball. When you take a look at what Grandma has done thus far, when you take a look at what Tux Texas Southern has done, I mean, they're knocking off Power 5 teams. I, mean, I can't wait until we get in conference play and see uh, all this talent uh, that, that's going up against these Power 5 teams and how they mix it up within conference play. Yeah, great point. Mike, any thoughts that you want to share on that? I think it's very exciting because here – you know, so many years ago, you'd see the first five, six, seven games and you'd see teams, you know, you know, swag teams, MEAC teams, you know, losing the first so many games until they get into conference play. But I don't know. I see in the last, I'd say five to 10 years, you're seeing that tide change. I don't know if it's a, trans <clears throat> a transfer portal. I don't know if it's, you know, just more recruit uh, talent recruiting. I don't know, but you see, uh, you're starting to see a lot more Power Five wins by SWAC and MEAC teams uh, at the beginning of the season. So I don't know when that trend started. I'd like to do an analysis, but that trend is certainly starting. I don't see it going away. I agree with you. Let me give a shout out to Dr. Newton Jackson getting in here talking about Doc. Hello, what's up? Have you seen Benedict? Yeah, I've seen him. They gonna, we going to give you the ranking breakdown. <clears throat> They've been on the top. They're doing their thing, that's for sure. Jerome C. Sutton, Jeep Sutton in here, Kevin Crawford. Uh, who else we got in here? Some folks getting I here. See, uh, Robert. I see I Dave see Barnett in here. Dave Barnett wants to know what's yeah. going on with his Panthers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll give him an update. Give him an update. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeep Boom Holly, Brandon King. I like that. People say they want to know what's up. I see you. Roger Holmes, that's Dr. Holmes in the building as well. Man, all of them in here. Let's get into this mid-major poll rankings. Drop me out this week. Nobody dropped out, actually. The top 10 with the 10 teams stay in there. Receiving votes are continue to receive votes. Lane Dragons, 5-5, five 4-3 and five, four and three with five points, as well as tied with Savannah State Tigers. And also 5-5, five and five, but 3-4 and four in terms of what they did in the conference. They are receiving votes. Let's get into the top 10. At number 10, you have none other than the Langston Lions, six and four, five and three. They lost another one. It was a close one. They fall two spots, but find a way to stick into the top 10 with the winning record. Uh, but they need to continue to move on. Let's get into number nine in terms of the rankings. At number nine, you have none other than Bowie State Bulldogs at six and four, five and three. They continue to move along the escalator as they actually stay at number nine. Bringing us to number eight, that's the Virginia State Trojans, six and four, five and three. 24 points as they continue to move forward. They actually dropped one spot uh, all the way at number seven, which number seven is West Virginia State, the Yellow Jackets, seven and four on the season. They played that last week and they won. So they move up in the poll three spots from number 10 previously as um, they close out the season at seven and four. Six and two. Bring us to number six, Albany State Golden Rams. They had a down season with seven wins. Think about that, y'all. Seven and three on the season, five and two in the conference rate, 49 points. Uh, but they stay at number six in terms mm. of the bottom six. You see who they are. Let's get into the top five programs. 
starting out with number five, uh, you have none other than Tuskegee, the Golden Tigers, dropped down one spot after a tough loss in the championship game. They really got beat up in that game, eight and three, seven and over the great season. When you think about where they were picked coming into the season, they get it done. Bring us to number four, Fort Valley State. Wildcats, eight and two, five and two. Uh, they move up a spot uh, to number four. They can't get in the playoffs because number three, Fayetteville State Broncos, nine and two on the season, win the CIAA champion, finally get it done in terms of taking off the bridesmaid slipper. Proud of the Broncos getting it done, 81 points. Uh, they stay at number three, bringing us to number two. When you think about those matchups, you have Virginia Union Panthers as they get it done. In that matchup, nine and one on the season, seven and one, three first place votes, eighty three points. Uh, they stay at rank number two, bringing us number one. Doctor Jackson, this is who you looking for? Your Benedict Tigers, eleven and zero. They win the championship in five fashion, undefeated. They are ranked number one in the region. They have a week off as they prepare to see who they play next weekend. Big time, big time matchups in terms of what they able to get done. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of the top ten? I see you got the little smirk on your face. Uh, what what do you want to tell me this week? Yeah, I, I got a conference champion sitting under Virginia Union there. I, I just I happen to notice that. I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting that. But here's here's the thing that I really want to take a look at. I want to take a snapshot so, of the poll right so now where we are. Fayetteville stay stronger than Virginia Union. I got to ask you that question. You can't sneak that in and ask like yeah, well, run to the bushes. Um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in my head. I'm like, well, Fayetteville State had them lost head to head somewhere along the line. But I, 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 I'm just wondering. I got a conference champion underneath Virginia. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to take a snapshot of the poll right now before the postseason starts. And I'm sitting here wondering. I'm like, hmm. No matter what happens in the postseason. It's Benedict, our black college national champion. Remains to be seen, but – or Dr. Cavill's hey, black college national champion. Now, you you, you got to remember <clears throat> in this first round, you're going to have a matchup with Fayetteville State. Fayetteville State wins that game. They play Benedict. Yep. You're telling me that you're going to keep yeah. Benedict at number one if Fayetteville State goes on the road to Benedict in Columbia and beat them? <laughs> Won't intriguing. Happen. Won't intriguing. happen. It's intriguing. <laughs> won't happen. <laughs> oh, man. It's man a, y'all do I'm, like, I'm like AD Drew. I want the chaos. <laughs> that, 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 man. Too many data points have to line up. Chaos. Won't you won't happen. see it first. Huh? Mike, what are your thoughts on the top 10 since Charles just wants trouble? He wants chaos. Uh. No, I am so with him on that one. Your conference championship to be way. What is wrong with you? I'm serious. Why is not? Why aren't the Broncos up there? We, I mean, we talked about them for five years. They've been dancing. They've been dancing at the altar. They finally got over the altar. I'm hearing Eddie James sing at last. They should be. They should be up there above Virginia Union. You can help I mean, make an argument. <laughs> I know for Virginia Union, they got the head-to-head, -head, but I'm just looking. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I agree. I, I, go, I normally go with head-to-head, -head, but when you conference champion, sorry. Man, I'm not playing with y'all. Let me get into my major division since y'all want to be like this. I, I, look at this. Let's start with the major division before I, before I lose it with these guys coming over here. Uh, those receiving votes, Howard and Morgan State, uh, and they actually play each other, so somebody is going to solidify their second spot. Uh, big time rival. It's interesting to see nobody drops out this ten week poll. Dep depending on the top ten, who loses on that? Can Howard, Morgan State, particularly Morgan State? Can you think about their season? Can they find a way to jump into the top ten? That will be interesting to see how they go. Let's get into the top ten. And number ten, Delaware State Hornets, a five and five, two and three. Uh, they play outside of the conference in, in a matchup, uh, and, and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, they're down to the third string quarterback, five and five, two and three. Uh, they had the big win over South Carolina State, but it'll be interesting to see how things go. Twenty points, falling three spots. Can they find a way to get a winning season and stay in the top team? Let's go to number nine, Alcorn State Braves, five and five, four and three on the season, twenty-five points. 
They were previous ranked 10. They move up a spot after getting that tough win against Thune Cookman, playing with the backup quarterback. They get it done with defense two weeks in a row, stay in the race to see if they can find a way to get it done. But they have a tough one this week. They play the rival Jackson State. Can they make the major upset? Uh, most people would see it is at home. It'll be interesting to see what that looks like. At number eight, you have Texas Southern Tigers, five and five, four and three. Who called this? Some people had this team last in the standings. I can say it wasn't me, so I don't feel bad about that one. Um, five and five, four and three on the season, and four and one in the division race. Think about that. 27 points. Uh, move up one spot from number nine after beating up on Brownland this past weekend. And number seven, Southern Jaguars, six and four, four and three, 49 points. Um, they move up one spot as they get it done against Mississippi Valley State. They have a week off where they'll be doing some TV watching, see what happens in the West with the rest of the team to see if the Bayou Classic actually comes into play in regards of them continuing their season if they can get it done. At number six, Alabama State Hornets playing in the classic matchup in the East Division. Um, could not get it done. Set up for a long field goal. Everybody knows by now. It was blocked. And fam, you get it done. They fall to six and four, four and three on the season. 56 points. Also fall a spot in the poll. They stay in the top 10, but move out of the top five. Let's get into the top five, the big boys. At number five, Prairie Bay and them Panthers, six and four, five and two. Blew off the doors of Pine Bluff. On the road, fell early, behind early, but then they just come back and get it done. Improved to six and four, five and two, seven and six, uh, six first place votes. They have a hold on the number one spot in the Western Division, but it's a slight hold. They got to go on the road. They can close it out and make everything academic, or if they lose, things get really interesting after that. Let's get in the top four. Number four, North Carolina A&T State Aggies. They had that loss to the Eagles, but they've rebounded. Pretty handsomely after that, starting at 0-3. Um, they've won seven straight. They're at 7-3, 4-0, and have a championship on the line in the Big South as they play Garner Well, Interesting to see what that goes. 84 points, bringing us number three. The team that beat them in that inaugural game of the season, Labor Day weekend, North Carolina Central Eagles, improved to 8-2, 4-1. They go on the road with a non-conference game as they finish their conference play and do it in fine fashion with at least a share of the championship and, more importantly, the celebration bowl bid 89 points previous rank three they stayed right there at number two florida Anlin rallies this team just finds out how to win after they took it on the chin for the first two games they've won eight mm-hmm. straight six and one in the conference yeah 97 points they stay at number two at number one not surprising anybody any longer is jack state tigers 10 and 0 7 and 0 had a little rough tough matchup against alabama a m controlled it for most of the game but you really got a chance to see about mm-hmm. that defense that Charles told you about all season long. Quarterback goes out. Um, defense continue to put in tough position, but they just turned the Bulldogs around and said, you can go a little bit, but you're not going any farther than this in terms of getting in the end zone. They had a big roadblock stop sign on the end zone, and they get it done. 12 first place votes, they continue to just win. 11 consecutive week that Jackson State remains number one. Mike, what are your thoughts in the terms of the top ten poll rankings? Oh, not uh, your top five are, are are spot on, Doc. I I will admit I have nothing wrong with the top five. I think they're I think everyone's where they need to be. Where did you have TSU out uh, uh, out of curiosity? Where were they? Number eight, Texas Southern is number eight. Well, who's, who's one spot after they went over Grambling? And who was six? Who's, who's, nine. Who was six and seven? Six and seven. Six is Alabama State. And Southern is seven. Okay. All right. Yeah, I could go with that. Uh, a lot. I, I, you could argue that Texas Southern is almost is a little higher, but I don't know. That's 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 Masomenos. Other than that, I think I think the poll is spot on, Doc. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, Charles, I see you jumping ahead of the brief. Just yeah. make sure you say it a little higher. <laughs> you said yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I do agree. Top five. I mean, you take a look at it. Uh, Prairie be playing for a, a spot in the SWAC championship uh, this Saturday. North Carolina NT playing for a big, big South championship. You already have the MIAC champion, North Carolina Central and FAMU. They uh, position themselves very well, I think, for a playoff bid. So, uh, and then, of course, Jackson State sitting there at number one. Uh, these are, I think, the strongest teams uh, uh, in HBC ball, along with Benedict. I'm not, yep. not going to leave out Benedict and Fayetteville. So. Exactly, without question. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, great points. I, I love it. I see that my rankings in terms of the HBC, you follow suit in terms of the coaches' analysis, so I give them a little credit. I mean, they've probably been cheating on the poll rankings to decide. Yeah, I guess Dr. Mill is right, so they slide in the top 25, and you got even a and uh, receiving votes for the top four uh, ranked in that same order uh, throughout the top 25 in those receiving votes. So just want to give a little shout out to myself there and let you know I told you about my numbers. I said to follow along. I get all excited all during the year. It's week to week. It ain't a projection. Everybody can do a projection. <laughs> what is a projection? That's what we on this thing to talk about. Projection okay, now, week to week. Y'all finally got to understand about that. I like it. Let's get into a break for Mike to keep talking and get mad at me. I don't want him to get out there. He was excited about it. Now he finna ruin it. Where the mic at? Turn the mic off. We'll be right back after this break and get into some of these matches in the second half. No. 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 You want him? Ooh, I like him. The quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Q Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCUPrideJoy on Facebook and Twitter. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want to love that and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Let's get in some of these uh, weekly key matchups. We're going to start with our mid-major division. We got a special SIC game of the week. Uh, we reason we're at least putting this on the table, even though there's not a game. The fact that they got a buy and they're undefeated, I think they're worth talking about. You got Columbia, South Carolina next week. Uh, Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. NCAA Division II first round by SIC. So that's Saturday the 26th. Time is two to be determined. Opponent is two to be determined. I said earlier about Fayetteville State. That would not happen in terms of a regional semifinals for that to take place. But you have Virginia Union, which we'll talk about more in detail on Thursday. They play Wingate. Virginia Union came in with a four seed in that region. They come out of that over Wingate. They will face Benedict, so you get a number one seed against a number four seed, Virginia Union out of CIAA. Ooh, Virginia Union, yep. get that done. Uh, you still going to be talking about the regular season champion, or are you going to say Virginia Union with the one loss to Shawan, Fayetteville State, get it done? Or do you have the matchup where Fayetteville State finds a way on the road to get by Delta State, then they find a way to get by West Florida or Limestone, which means they've won two tough games. If they get by Delta, that's a number two regional matchup uh, out of Delta State. And then whether it's number three ranked team in West Florida, even Limestone, they get those two victories, then they play in 
in a regional championship, uh, in that case, it could be Benedict. You still would be talking about Benedict regular season? Let me play. Don't answer that now. Just think about it. Just think about it. I'm just curious. It's juicy uh, to even think that we might have a, a Virginia Union's Jada Byers going up against that Benedict defense. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. would be fun to watch. I want to see it. I want to see that. Yeah. I'm tired. Uh, that would be a nice matchup. Yeah, that'd be nice. That defense against that offense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are focused on that, and they might just get it. Let's get into our major like, bonus division of the game. Since we don't have a non-independent um, mid-major, we gave you this as a bonus. Loma, Mississippi, Sphinx, Kasem Stadium. This is an Eastern Division matchup versus Western Division matchup. Remember, Alcorn slid to the West. November 19th, 2 o'clock, ESPN+. Plus. It is a top-10 matchup. Alcorn has found a way to continue to fight, stayed in the top 10. Jack State Tigers are 10-0, 7-0 at number nine, Alcorn State Braves, 5-5, 4-3. I'll give in the last breakdown all this analysis, but what we'll say right now and Alcorn still has a chance to win the West. Some things have to go in their favor, and obviously they got to win this game. They get a winning season, and they finish at five and three. Um, depending on what happens with Prairie View, they could find a way to have the matchup. And guess what? If the head-to-head tiebreaker is just Alcorn State and Prairie View, both sitting at five and three, remember that Friday night game? It comes back to that. Yep. The Braves won the head-to-head in overtime. They would end up going to play a replay with Jackson State the week after in the championship game. Man, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup before you get into all that? Man, just talk about the matchup. Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of that? Will it happen? Nope. It won't happen. <laughs> it won't happen. We can all talk about it. We, we, all that I, you did a great job of fluffing it up and hyping it up, but, but I, I, I can't see, uh, them, uh, Jackson State lose. I don't know what, what Shadour's status is or whatever, but, uh, you know, it is at Alcorn, so anything can happen. Um, but there's, it's too many ifs to me in that scenario. Uh, even if Alcorn State wins, you still got to see what Southern does. Prairie View has to lose. <clears throat> I think they have an outside sluggish chance, but I don't see it happening. Oh, you don't I will have say to pick this: since you're covering the right. game, you don't have to pick the winner. But break down your analysis. No, I will say this: uh, Lorman, Mississippi, Jack Spink Stadium is easily uh, one of the top five. Uh, football atmospheres and all of HBCU football. If you've never gone there, put it on your bucket list uh, in terms of uh, making it down there for a big game because that place is going to be rocking this weekend. Uh, You're talking about the tailgating atmosphere, RVs all over the place. Jackson State and and all corn fans they they um, I mean they've been picking at each other since last week on social media. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, and, and and Jackson State, you know, you're going to get a heap of help of, of Jarvin Howard, who I think is the best back, uh, one of the best backs, I think, in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, and, I mean, he just pounds you, pounds you, pounds you. Uh, 32 carries this past weekend uh, for over another another game, over 100 yards. So uh, Jackson State's defense is going to get a stern test. Uh, the question uh, for me is, can Alcorn throw the ball a little bit and, and not allow Jackson State to stack the box? But I, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, it's one of those games you throw the record out. Uh, even during Alcorn's run, uh, getting to the SWAC championship, they lost twice to Jackson State, down Jackson State team. So you throw those records out. It's going to be a good one. Good point. Let's get into this next uh, matchup when you talk about that. Uh, we got a couple of more. Uh, we'll come back after the break. We'll get into some other matchups in terms of a bonus matchup coming out of the MEAC as North Carolina Central gets on the road for a non-conference matchup. Uh, then we'll talk about the old rivalry game against FAMU and Bethune Cookman Eastern Division matchup. We'll get into that a little bit. And then we'll find a right and close it out and talk about North Carolina a t as they fight for a championship. Let's take a break. We'll come back on the other side and get you these last couple of key matchups uh, of the week. i uh, give you a breakdown and see what these gentlemen think. Stick with us. We'll be right back on the other side after this break. 
This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Let's get in as we get into the fourth period, the fourth quarter. Uh, we got some games. We got a big one, Cookville, Tennessee. Tucker Stadium, MEAC versus the OVC. Credit to uh, North Carolina Central. Obviously, with only five conference games, they have the ability to play some non-conference games, but they kind of spread it around. Big South, it went up in uh, Colonial. I also got one now in the OBC. So they've had a couple of mix uh, uh, of their FCS opponents. This one is at 130 on ESPN 3. This is number three, North Carolina Central, 8-2, and 4-1 and one at Tennessee Tech, Golden Eagles. Historically white colleges, for those that don't know, 4-6 and six on the season, 2-3 and three in the conference rates. So they're in the middle of the pack, if you would, tied with uh, Tennessee State that is also 2-3 and three in terms of that matchup. With that being said, Charles, what are your thoughts in, with the Eagles versus Tennessee Tech? Well, I, I think the big thing for me in this one is the heavy lifting has been done. Uh, you won the MIAC. You're going to the Celebration Bowl. How much Davis Richard do we see in this game? Uh, and so I, I'm looking at, you know, I, I, at what point do I pull my starters? Because I want to make sure that I go into this Celebration Bowl with all uh, – all bullets in, in, in the chamber, if you will. So uh, this will be an interesting game to see. I think North Carolina Central can go there and go get the win. But uh, I, I want to see what the what the depth for North Carolina Central looks like because uh, there's no way in the world that I keep all my starters out there, non-conference game. Uh, you know, there's there's a, a lot for uh, North Carolina Central to do to burnish the resume in this game. Interesting. You do have the fact they just got in the top 25. They wanted to be in the top 25. The remain in the top 25, you need to win it. Uh, to give an HBCU comparison, obviously, different teams. You got Tennessee State that defeated Tennessee Tech 30 to 14 uh, early in the season. That was Saturday, o October the 15th. Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Yeah, I did. I did have those thoughts, uh, CB, as well. You know, what do you have to gain other than? You know, you win this game, at, you know, the, the the rankings for the FCS, they're going to look at this. Second thing is, you know, this is a this could be a winnable game. Tennessee Tech is in the middle of the pack. I think Doc said that look, they're allowing 300, uh, you know, 300 to 350 to 400 yards a game uh, total offense against them. Tennessee State beat them. This is a winnable game. The only question that I have is still, you know, what do you gain? You, you've clinched the MEAC. You in the celebration bowl? What you know? What more do you have to gain? And I'm kind of with CB on this. You know, do you pull some of your starters out somewhere and and you know after halftime or something like that? Are you gonna try some new plays that you want to try? Uh, but I, I just, I it'll be an interesting game if you know it's played. You know, early in this year, this is a winnable game for North Carolina Central. Good points. Let's get into the next one by both of you all question of whether they're going to play it. We're going to go back to the SWAC uh, in terms of a robbery game. Number three, Florida A&M, Orlando, Florida, Camping World Stadium. Uh, they come off a good uh, new robbery, if you will, in South Alabama State. Now they play uh, a season rival that they've had for many years. Uh, Saturday, November the 19th, 1 o'clock, ESPN 3, number two, Florida A&M, Rattlers, 8-2, and 6-1 on the season versus Bethune, Cooking Wildcats, 2-8, 2-5. Uh, you see the record disparity, but it's one of those games you say you throw it out. Fam, you finally got the big win last week, and it allowed them to get the playoffs. They're in the same position again where they need the victory. This time they have plans to host the game, at least 
uh, big for it if they can find a way to get the victory to get it done. Staying with you, Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of fam, you and Bethune Cookman in terms of this match? Yeah, I think this one, it, you can throw the record out the book. Uh, you know Bethune's going to play much tougher. You saw what they did when they came to Prairie View. Um, I don't know what the records say, but uh, Bethune will bring come with all Pistons uh, – Flaring. You see their, their records and the statistics. If you look at the first five games or the first few games in the uh, during the year and compare that to the, the last four or five games, it's a big difference. It's night and day. And this is a classic. I think uh, I think fam will come and bring that number two defense. No, uh, number one, sometimes offense. And I think they'll play. They're motivated by, you know, where they, where they are in the FCS polls. I think they'll come and take care of business. Charles, what are your thoughts? You know, if you're a fan of the Cinderella story, uh, you're rooting for Bethune Cookman in this game just from the simple fact that they had so much uh, upheaval this year. Uh, they've had to battle through two hurricanes coming in, uh, spending time away from the campus. Uh, nothing would make their season more than knocking off FAMU and potentially, you know, hurting their bid for the, for the playoffs. Uh, but I just think FAMU's defense is a little bit too tough uh, for Bethune Cookman in this. But you know, uh, they're going to get Terry Sims and those guys. They're going to get their best punch. So uh, I think the game will be close. I think it'll be a, a defensive battle. Yep, I think it'll be closer point, than most people think. Yeah, to your point, uh, Bethune Cookman has played tough all year long. They may have not shown in terms of getting mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. But they've been a lot of games and teams that have played it will tell you they knew they played them after the game, even if they got the victory, uh, which in most cases was. I, Let's turn I, I the page not, and get into this HBC independent. No, I was about to Go say, ahead. I think Bethune Cookman is 9-1 and one versus Family over the last 10 games or something to that effect. Yeah. So, you know, you can't, yeah. they would, you can't discount. They just got over the hump last year after losing nine. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. But that, yeah. a lot of times, you know, those robberies kind of go like that. If they're yeah. not back and forth a couple of years, a team may go on the run. So it might just be family's time to go on a couple of games run before they find right. a way to flip it again. But uh, as we get in there, let's get into this last uh, matchup we'll have today. Again, we'll talk about these playoff matches on. Thursday, and then we'll get into some more of these swag matchups that are really key. Prayer View. Uh, we talked a little bit about the off one one day. We'll get into those matchups to let you know what is going on. And before the end of the show, I'll give you a little breakdown in terms of all the necessities. Let's get in that key matchup. Number four, North Carolina AT goes on the road. They go to Bowling Springs, North Carolina, Ernest W. Springler Stadium, Garner Webb. Big South Saturday, November the 19th, 11 a.m. ESPN Plus. That's number four, North Carolina a and State Aggies in my ranking outside of the top 25, essentially at number 32. They're 73, 4-0 in the Big South, and they're at Garner Webb Bulldogs, another historically white college. Again, for those that don't know, 5-5 five and five on the season, 4-0 in terms of the matchups. So you see both teams are 4-0. Whoever wins this gets the automatic bid. The only way um, – Garner Webb gets in the tournament, certainly is winning this. It gets really tough at seven and four for North Carolina AT. So they win this to go to eight and three. They beat no questions. They get the automatic bid and they're in. Essentially, certainly what they wanted to when they made the decision to move out of the MEAC, which bid goes directly to the celebration boat. So a lot of things on the line. Interesting in terms of this matchup. Let me stay with you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of the Aggies? Can they get it done? Before they leave the Big South, they go to the Colonial. Can they get a chance? Yeah, it's going to be a, a good matchup. Uh, Gardner Webb, number one offense in the Big South, going against the number one defense in North Carolina AT. Uh, when you take a look at it, though, I, I think AT can get this, and the formula is simple uh, play good defense and turn around and hand the ball off to Basil Tootie and just let him go. <laughs> Uh, I think that's uh, – he's the number one rusher in, in the Big South. He's rushed for t- over 1,200 yards. I, I don't think it, it's hard. You give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. Play action, go over the top, and uh, try to get this win against Garden Webb. Interestingly enough, though, Garden Webb, the number two rushing defense in the Big South, but the disparity between uh, North Carolina and T as far as – uh, as far as rushing the defense and, and guarding the web is somewhere about a 30 yard average or something of that effect. So I expect AT to go out and go get the W. Mike, I'm just going to hand it off. Y'all said that's what they need to do is just turn around, quarterback, hand it off. Don't look too pretty in this matchup. 
Uh, both of y'all may have seen that with your Dallas Cowboys. You a little too pretty with the coordinator there. But yeah, yeah, exactly. he the yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> don't don't, don't even want to talk about that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I can, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you you had me at number one defense at, uh, in the uh, Big South. You know, allowing twenty five yards uh, a game, uh, twenty five points per game. Number one, number one defense. Next one is is Gardner Webb. Um, you also look at rushing. Uh, that the leading rusher for uh, North Carolina and T. Um, you know, Bay Shield, one hundred twenty five yards per game. CB said it. Give them feed that beast. The other thing is, you know, you got to look at North Carolina and T. What are they on a six, seven game winning streak? Um, and they they've had some good victories. So um, I, I see North Carolina A and T if they play that play the same way that they played the last three four games, I see them winning um, uh, and being able to successfully beat uh, Gardner Webb. Uh, that defense has to be stout, but you know, run the ball, keep it on the field. I don't know how good Gardner Webb did. You know, at least on paper, they don't look quite as well uh, on defending the run. So you may surprise them with a little passes, but why do it when you got that rushing offense of North Carolina and T? Stephen Gaither disagrees with you, Mike. Uh, uh, with said, what? Oh. They gotta, they gotta stop his cousin. They gotta stop his cousin, our gate. <laughs> oh he yeah. Up last year. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he thinks going to Webb is going to get it done. Well, you know, part of that is just that. North Carolina eight between Aggies and Winston Salem State, but he is a professional, so I'm sure he's calling the tight to the best. I will say this at halftime: uh, Prairie and Panthers lead uh, Washington State 41 to 27. That's courtesy of G. Boone and Polly uh, putting that out there. So interesting to see what looks like that. Brandon King puts it out there as well in terms of giving scoring updates. I appreciate that. I do want to do this: um, give an update. You had a question earlier about Fayetteville State and Virginia Union, uh, some matchups between uh, you, Mike, and Charles as well. Uh, AD confirmed it. I thought this was the case. Virginia Union was the team that beat Fayetteville State earlier season. And Virginia Union at that time went on the road to get yeah. that victory to get it done. So interesting to see in terms of those matchups. Moving on, we'll get a little into it. Oh, Let oh, me Gaith mess up Gaith your mind. Gaith take Gaith it back Gaith and take Gaith it into Gaith my – Gaither came came back and said, "Nah, I think A and T wins now. How you gonna one eighty? <laughs> he just was be, he was being out there just taking a jab at him. He wanted to make sure on the record who he had. I told you a professional. With that being said, it. let me let me go into this uh, data analytics framework that Mike likes to talk about data points. Oh, this one's really going to be less about data points, but just a lot of information. Let me give you the breakdown." What happens? You can go anything with prayer if you just went in the game, and then you don't have to worry about anything I'm about to say. Um, they cut out all the drama, and they move on, and they will play at Jackson next week, a rematch from last year's championship about getting it done. But if somehow you get Valley, at Valley team that you talk about at home to get the second win of the year, which would be a major upset against the number top five team, um, in terms of that, the number one uh, offense in terms of the conference that has allowed the fewest number of sacks, a lot of that is because they run the ball, but as well as a dual-threat quarterback uh, in a lot of ways, that's another thing there. Defense has been able to be able to move a little bit, so these things can't happen. If it's a two-way tie, things get really simple. If it's a two-way tie between Prairie View and Texas Southern, Prayer if you won in the Labor Day Classic, so prayer if you still go, it's no big deal. If it's a two-way tie, meaning Texas Southern loses this week and then next weekend Southern loses, that means it's a two-way tie between Southern and Prairie View. Southern beat Prairie View earlier, so Southern goes to the rematch with the championship game against Jackson State. Uh, with the Prairie View over TSU, that means that TSU would have had to lose, Prairie View loses, as well as Alcorn loses. I mean, TSU wins, Alcorn loses, and Prairie View loses, Southern loses. Then you have a two-way tie. The yeah. other two-way tie is Alcorn. That means Alcorn upsets Jackson State. That means Southern loses to Grammar. That means Prairie View loses to Valley. That means Texas Southern loses to Alabama a and That's a lot to go on, but if it happens, you have a head-to-head -head matchup between Alcorn and Prairie View. 
as I told you earlier, all going won that matchup Friday night. They would have another matchup a week later against Jackson State. Go. Gets a little more complicated and more interesting. Three team ties. Couple of scenarios where you get three team ties. You have a three team tie between Prairie View, meaning Prairie View lost the Valley. Southern beats Grambling. Texas Southern beats Grambling, but Alcorn loses. You have a three team tie. Head to head matchup. Nothing there. All teams beat each other. So essentially a one to one in terms of head team. So you now you go down to Western Division breakdown. Texas Southern was four and one in the Western Division. Prairie View was three wow. and two in the Western Division. Southern was three and two in the Western Division. That means Texas Southern would have the advantage in terms of being four and one in the division. Most likely you would see uh, Texas Southern Jack State in that scenario. Another three team scenario would be Alcorn, Prairie View, and Texas Southern, meaning Southern loses to Gramlin in the Bayou next weekend. Alcorn upsets Jackson State. Prairie View loses the Valley. Texas Southern beats Alabama AM on the road. Head to head in that scenario, similar to the last one. All teams beat each other, so everybody's one and one. Now you're going into the Western Division. Again, I already said this. TSU is four and one. Prairie View is three and two. Alcorn is two and three. Texas Southern has the advantage in that scenario. They go. Three team scenario with Alcorn, Prairie View, and Southern. Head to head matchup is the first one. You got Southern that's two and oh. Beat both of these teams. Alcorn State is one and one. Prairie View is the least one that wants this three team tie break because they are on two. They're out of the picture. Go Southern, Alcorn, Southern blocks to, I mean, Southern beats Alcorn. So they go in this scenario. If you get to the three team tiebreaker in that scenario, though, Western Division, Prairie View is three and two. Southern's three and two. Alcorn, two and three. Southern beats Prairie View. Still Southern go. Four team scenario where it just really is wild. Alcorn, Prairie View, Southern, Texas Southern. It could happen theoretically by the numbers, meaning Prairie View loses the Valley. Alcorn beats Jackson State. Southern beats Grambling. Texas Southern beats Alabama and M. They're all same record in the division, finishing at four and three. Head to head matchup would have Texas Southern two and one, Southern two and one, Alcorn one and two, Prairie View one and two. Texas Southern beats Southern, uh, favors them. Western Division second tiebreaker scenario. Told you this. TSU is four and one. Prairie View three and two. Southern is three and two. Alcorn two and three. Texas Southern. So as you see, a lot of the scenarios in terms of three or four way actually benefits Texas Southern. Head to head benefits for the most part Southern and Alcorn. Again, if Prairie View just wins, gets it done, all of this time I just wasted. Yeah. We don't have to worry about anymore. But I thought it was important to break it down. This is not the official breakdown. SWAC will bring it out. But it gives you something to think about, and I thought I'd spend a little extra time to do that. Charles? Prairie View has one job. One, one job. job. They they know the assignment. They know the assignment. Yes. The assignment is in front yeah, of one. them. Yes. That's right. it. Mm -hmm. They can make all this obsolete and just yeah. leave it for you the television <laughs> talking heads to do it like I did today. Um, and we will see <laughs> we will, that afternoon on Saturday what happens, what direction. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Gabil, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Watson and Charles Bitch. Again, I want to thank you for listening, Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we'll be back on Thursday to talk about a couple of more of these matchups. We will get in that Prairie View Valley matchup. You know, we'll make sure we get into that. We'll get into the first round of the playoffs, so we'll talk about Virginia Union uh, in terms of that matchup. We'll give you that uh, on this weekend in terms of on Thursday to give you some highlights in terms of what uh, Virginia Union can expect against Wingate. We'll get into the other matchup, which is Fayetteville State going on the road to Delta State, the number two in that region. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll get into the MEAC match matchup to see who will make sure they solidify the second spot, which is Howard and Morgan State. Again, Howard has a chance to win a share of the championship. Uh, so we'll get in a little bit of that matchup, and then we'll have another teaser that we'll send you out just uh, to give you some thoughts in terms of what else is out there in the mix uh, in terms of that Texas Southern and Alabama A&M. We'll break down that as well. That'll do it for us today. Follow me, Dr. Yadda Fadil, 
on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter. That's Facebook and YouTube on Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We'll talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. Dismissed. <laughs>